Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Guru Room. And for The Guru Room today, we got a very great guest. He's an actor, and he's going to be part of an LGBTQ horror series called The Demon Hunter. And I'm really looking forward to talking to him about this. Um, I, I'm always happy to see new L, L, LGBT horror films coming up. And this is going to be really, really cool. And I'm looking forward to seeing it. I, I know one of the, the actors that's actually going to be in it, Jason. And uh, I'm going to be talking to my guest today. He, he, is a, he is an actor. He has done a couple horror films. And now he's going to be in a horror television series. He's done other t- television shows as well. His name is Talmario Tal, Tal Fletcher. And I am Rocco Cross, as you could tell, I am the host of Stutters, and my interview with Tamario is coming up next. Okay, um, welcome, welcome to Gru, and thank you so much for taking time out of your night and coming on the show and taking time out of your vacation. <laughs> hey, no, well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course, of course, yes. Uh, I, I was. I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, well, let's get it going. All right. Here we go. <laughs> uh, the first thing I wanted to ask you is, what drew you to want to act, and how has the road been so so far? No, well, I mean, that's, that's a very interesting question. I always laugh when people ask me that question because the thing that I knew, I always wanted to be some kind of performer. Like when Mm -hmm. I was younger, I used to like skate and I used to think that I was going to do that long-term competitively, but I'm not going to lie. It wasn't until I watched, wait for it, Scream, the movie Scream. Um, I had to be around... 13, 14, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching that movie and being so taken by it and not just, oh my God, it's a cool movie. But then I started thinking about it on a technical aspect. Like, well, I know it's a movie. I'm a kid. I know it's a movie, but how is she crying? How are Mm -hmm. they getting the windows to do that? Where's that blood coming from? And I started asking myself those questions on a technical level. And I just remember being so engaged by the movie and then it was at that point i was like this feeling that i feel right now that's what i want to do for other people that's what i want to do so that's when i realized a that's when that's what it's all about that is what it's all about so and then from then on it's just been on and moving and i don't know uh your background as far as like the business goes but Mm -hmm. with any business there's ebbs and flows you know what i mean like sometimes you're like yes i'm booking i'm i'm grooving i'm doing my thing and then other times it's like do i suck (laughs) (laughs) what is going on right now like what is happening so but honestly like right now in this little period that i'm in right now like i can't complain like it could be worse you know what i mean so i'm i'm booked I stay busy. I have representation that I love, so I can't complain. So right now, thumbs up. Ask me again in two months, and that might change. But right now, I am happy as a clown. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Uh, I see like one one of the first first films, or um, I think it was a film or TV. I'm pretty sure it was a film. One one of the first films you were in is is a uh, something called third uh third third boyfriend wanted oh no that was definitely not the first that was actually a year ago two oh, years ago out, really yeah 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 so that's actually recent and that's streaming on amazon prime now and that's uh kind of a modern take on a thruple situation so yeah. that was that was a very interesting script and that's also one of those hollywood things where it's like okay i'm doing this project Nobody expected, and I'm, no offense to the director or anybody like that, but nobody expected it to get the backing. Nobody expected it to like take off, get yeah. uh, distribution, all that good stuff. But then it did, and it's gotten 
a great response. So I oh, still wow. get people reaching out to me like, oh yeah, I watched it. I saw it. I kind of relate to it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, okay, that's a character. That's not me. <laughs> that's just something I portrayed. I'm not in the throuple, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting and very modern. <laughs> Okay, I, you know, I I can see why a fan would would ask that of of you. I mean, I know you're only playing a character, but you also did another trouble film too. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, that one that one has been wrapped. Oh, so you're just going down my IMDb, huh? Um, yes, that one has been wrapped. We're actually waiting for that's actually uh, the same director. Too, and he brought me okay. back because he wanted to do a different take on the story that was launched. And so this one is almost the same feel, but it's definitely has more of like an urban edge. And we nice. actually wrap that. I want to say like once we started shooting again, like after the pandemic in like that August, that's when we started shooting that. And we wrapped that like in September of 2020. So it's one of those things that's still in production and we'll see what happens we'll yeah. see how it comes along so oh wow okay yeah because like the the difference with the both films is the the third uh, boy boy from one um you're in a relationship with uh, two two men and with no. the other one is two women right no 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 so with um third boyfriend wanted yeah. it is me my partner who's a man and then another woman that oh, comes, it's a in. Woman that comes and in. then okay. uh with the throuple it's me and two ladies so yeah it's 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 interesting it's interesting <laughs> so yeah and that's another reason why i was like kind of excited to do it because it shows like a different size and yeah, exactly. as an actor you just don't want to be doing this can i curse on here yeah of course you can you don't want to be doing the same kind of shit. So <laughs> you want to, you want to, you want to mix it up. So it's, 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 it's interesting. It's very interesting. Okay. Okay. And um, like, I mean, by doing those, those kind of films, like how do you prepare yourself to actually do like sex scenes and kissing scenes and stuff like that <laughs> well i mean anytime you do like a sex scene or any kind of intimacy scene mm -hmm. it's i kind of think of it like a choreographed dance so it's it's all very technical you know what i mean so the first thing that i do when i know that's coming up me and my co-star yeah we're like this you know what i mean because you want to build that bond and you want to yeah, have exactly. that like that relationship and that level of comfort because it resonates on screen. So that's the most important thing. And then when it comes down to like the actual filming of it, it's, it's basically like a technical dance, you know what I mean? And so just okay. hitting all the points, hitting all the markers and it, there's nothing sexy about it because you got you and your scene partner, then you yeah. got people in the corner, you got the cameraman, you got all this stuff. So yeah, we're acting because there's nothing sexual about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay yeah you see me all right so yeah <laughs> yeah i i i can only uh, imagine how that is I, I i mean like a lot of people when they they see those scenes on television and it's all hot and heavy and intimate and are, they're they're like wow there's so much passion there I, I i wonder how they don't they don't fall for one another and but then you don't realize like how many eyes are on you while you're filming it <laughs> exactly and you know what i used to think that as well and i still kind of have that mentality but honestly with the passion stuff that has nothing to do with the sex scene mm -hmm. i can definitely see how two people who are working on a set that close together not doing the sex stuff but just yeah. doing like the regular scenes and like getting to know each other i can definitely see how they would fall for each other so anytime i hear that actors oh they've hooked up or they're in a relationship <laughs> now i'm like oh it makes sense yeah because they've been like this you know what i mean they've been in each other's sphere for god knows however long doing that project so yeah that, yeah yeah you're right about that it's true 100 <laughs> percent. and tell me how it was working with with will with with Willie on the TV series Miles Miles and Cal. 
Oh, wow. Well, that, that was actually one of like, that was a, a spinoff of the first series that I did, which was called My Brother's Keeper. And uh, those two characters, they got like so much, they, so many people love those characters that they got their spinoff. So Miles and Cal was like my, really my first series that I was like able to dive in and where I learned how to develop a character. And going back to the chemistry thing that we were talking about mm-hmm. before, uh, my co-star Albert, that Willie, um, yeah. that was like one of the first times I learned about like chemistry and really working with someone on set and like how when you do have chemistry with someone and how that resonates. So that project, I'm not gonna lie, that project has a special place in my heart because oh, nice. to this day, I still get DMs, I still get fan mail, if you want to call it that, yeah. messages, because that project resonated with so many characters and it's it, it definitely has a special place in my heart. And I was actually in a meeting, I don't know if I should be saying this, but <laughs> I was actually in a meeting with uh, the producers and the showrunners of that that project because we were trying to like brainstorm ways to kind of revisit it you know what Mm -hmm. I mean because it had that much of a following so fingers crossed we will see what's going on with those characters and how they develop so wow awesome nice yeah nice and there was like another uh, because no I like I'm a big horror fan and I have like a, like a lot of horror stuff and I yes. saw you were in a couple like horror films and one is a horror slasher pig pigster was it pigster yes <laughs> that was that was one of those campy horror movies that like you find like in the Netflix box way yeah. down at the bottom or at the, in the red box box way down at the bottom but the cool thing about that that was like one of my first horror films where we actually had like a decent budget so like the props department I got to work on that set and see like the props department like the actual pig monster like the makeup that they did on it and all that good stuff and that was a very that was a very interesting project and that was another one of those projects to where like we shot it we wrapped it we didn't hear anything from it and then Mm -hmm. i want to say years later on halloween like two years ago is when it finally seen the light of day and really oh and then, yeah, and then if, I don't know if you've seen it or, like, looked at the IMDb, but, like, we had some good names. Like, Clint Howard was in yeah. that movie, and I was like, oh, Robert Davi was in that movie. Yeah. And people know him from, like, the Goonies and, like, other mob movies and stuff like that. So that experience was actually a really cool, cool experience because, like, I'm just sitting there kind of still, like, a newbie, like, fresh face and, like, yeah. just taking everything in, you know what I mean? And then... um getting that first taste of actually working in horror and like i know horror gets this bad rep at times it's like oh blah 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 but like doing horror movies and doing horror work is so hard because it's such a range of emotion and i tip my hat to like the people who you watch in the horror movies like Mm -hmm. the jamie lee curtis's and the the nev campbell's that do it and it's so real like that shit is hard it's hard so and that's always been my go-to like that's my genre like the shirt you're wearing right now it's like my my favorite director is Wes Craven so it's like hands down come on hands down yeah so yeah so doing those kind of projects it's like near and dear to my heart nice and and by being on like your first slasher film that did pig pigster um what kill do you like best from that movie <laughs> well there was there was some crazy crazy kills but there was this one kill that they did and like the guy he's running from the pig monster and then like there's a lot of special effects and the pig monster does something and like he pulls the guy back and then you just see the guy fly and then he just <laughs> splats against the wall and i was like okay all right, all right. that's, that's <laughs> cre- creative creative Because I will say that is the one thing, because my horror, um, my horror franchise is Scream. 
Scream and Nightmare on Elm Street. But with Scream with Ghostface, it does get a little boring because all he's doing is just like stabbing. It's like, do something right. else. So right. when you see like these new and inventive kills, it's like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Here we go. Okay, I'm, I'm interested. So, you know, I have to say in the Scream movie, my, I think one of my favorite kills, I'm pretty sure it's Scream 2 when, when the guy has his ear against the stool because he thinks someone is having a little bit of fun uh-huh and the uh-huh. knife goes through his ear bah well <laughs> i'm gonna give it to the one that always stands out to me and it's and i'm surprised because it's from the newer ones it's from scream four um I love the scream death four. of oh the death of olivia because it yes, was so yes. brutal yes. and it was like something we've never seen before in mm-hmm. uh, the series so it's like Oh, and I was watching it and I was like, okay, well, whoever these killers are, the other ghost faces are like, okay, that's overkill. Wait, what do you do? That's, <laughs> that's a lot. Whoa. I saw that and I was like, okay, we want to see more of that. Yeah, we want to see more of that. So I, I don't know. Did, did Rose McGowan, when McGowan she got killed, yes. that, was, that was a brutal kill. That was creative, but then yeah. at the same time, it was like, okay. But then, like, even when I was younger and I was watching it, I was like, what kind of fucking garage is that? Because wouldn't it go back down? Like, what's happening? What really? Like, what's happening? So, but no, it was it, uh, from a visual standpoint. Mm-hmm. Yes, I will give mm-hmm. it to it. That was, it was nice. You know, I have to say, when I first went to the movies to see Scream, like, I, I actually went and saw Scream when it first came out. <laughs> and Nice. When I went in the theater to see that, I was completely shocked because I thought that Drew Barrymore was going to be the final girl. Wasn't it amazing? And then it's like, oh, we just killed the best, or yes. the biggest name. So she was like, the biggest name on that set. And it was like, well, where is this going now? Because if you're going to kill Drew Barrymore in the first 13 minutes, right. what right. the hell am I watching? <laughs> so, and between that. <laughs> And then obviously the twist at the end, yeah. it's like, I, w- I was hooked. Like that yeah. movie, that movie completely changed my life. And then like, for me, I will say Scream 2 holds like the more nostalgic part in my okay. heart. Just, okay. just because I remember after seeing the first Scream and then just like waiting for Scream 2 and like yeah. the anticipation to it, I can tell you where I was, <laughs> what theater what seat like everything that is the one movie i've seen probably the most i'll watch it really all the time i literally just watched it uh two nights ago nice. because it popped up on my uh youtube feed and i was like well what's going on what is this all about because it was the 24th anniversary oh, of the, nice. the film yeah yeah i love tori tori spelling with the stab series Oh my God, I died. I was like, and that, and that's another thing about it too. It was so, it was so creative how they did that, like the film within a film. It's like, mm-hmm. I still think about how ahead of the time that series was. Oh and gosh, it's just like, yeah. that's amazing. Yes. It, it, uh, it, yeah. Between that and Nightmare on Elm Street, I'm like, Wes Craven, you are oh, the of man. Course. You know what I mean? So... Hey, and Wes, Wes, Wes Craven, well, I, actually, I think his, his kid daughter was the one that wanted Johnny Depp to be in the first film because John, Johnny Depp wasn't, wasn't known yet, and the daughter thought that he was cute, so there she asked go. her father to put him in the movie. And uh-huh. the rest is history. And it's history. <laughs> and the crazy thing about that, too, is like, that was Johnny Depp's first movie was yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Patricia Arquette's first movie yeah, was Nightmare on Elm Street Warriors, 3. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. like, wow. Like, come on. <laughs> come on. So. And Lawrence, Lawrence Fish, Fishburne, too. Lawrence he was in Fishburne, the yeah. Warriors as well. 100%. So, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> Freddy, man, Freddy, <laughs> he's my, yeah, Freddy, Freddy and ghost fights. You can't go there wrong. You, go. There you, you go. can't go wrong. Now, who would, well, yeah, I was going to say who would win, but ghost face is human. Freddy isn't. 
<laughs> exactly. Exactly. And a- another fun fact that kind of blew my mind. And like, I, j- I tell everybody, cause I think it's the coolest thing. Me and Robert Anglin have the same birthday. Just ah. saying. June 6th. There All right. Go. Okay. So that's, that's pretty. Yeah. Okay, I-, I like sweet. to t- tell, tell everyone that like, yeah, me and Freddy Krueger have the same birthday. Nice. Don't you forget it. <laughs> how how was it like filming another horror film that you were part of called Feast of Fear? Well, that funny story, that's actually Pigster. That was actually the working oh. title. And then when it was released, because remember how I was telling you how yeah. like, we didn't hear for a long, long time. And then like it finally got distribution and came out. Oh, they so repackaged it, it and it came out as Pixter. Exactly. So oh. that was the same project. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. It's okay. it's funny how the business works. It's so, it's so crazy. And then like, I guess they <laughs> went through whatever it was that they went through and did all the testing or whatever. And was like, you know what? We think this is going to do better under the title Pigster instead of Fig, uh, Feast of Fear, uh, mm-hmm. I guess, because of the pig monster. So yeah. it's like, okay. All right. That that makes a lot of sense. 100%. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And, and here I am again reading from your IMDB page. <laughs> Love it. To... Love it. He did his research. Wanted to... TV series, one of the web series, TV series I saw you were part of is called Steam Room Story. So what's, gotcha. the, what's the wildest steam room story you, you think? Jesus, that, <laughs> that was like what, literally one of the first things that I did. And that actually has like a huge following. Like uh, I yes, that, it that I part, it's, it's still going. And I believe mm-hmm. there was a movie and all that good stuff. Honestly... Jesus, the only thing that comes to mind when I think of steam room stories was one of the stories where <laughs> one of the guys and who has their phone in the steam room, but oh, yeah. okay, he had his phone in the steam room and he's asking Siri questions and Siri just goes off on him like, <laughs> shut up, you stupid bitch. Why are you asking me such dumb questions? Like that's the only, that's the one thing that stands out to me about that project. No, he- it, it, it was a while ago, but <laughs> it still has a, a crazy following. Oh a yeah, crazy it does. I, I, I was looking it up and I was shocked on how big right? the following is for, for that series. And I think even for the film, I know they got a couple of names for the film too, because I think Tracy Lords was in the film. A few other people was in the film. I wasn't in the film. Why not, JC? Yeah, why reach not? Out, yeah, reach out to the creators, guys, and you ask him, why wasn't Tamario Fletcher in the film? Um, but yeah, no, that was one of my first projects that I did. And like, you're going down the list and I'm like recapping all this stuff. And it's like, <laughs> I've been, no, I've actually been very lucky to have my hands a part of some cool stuff that kind of mm-hmm. like resonates with a lot of people. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. I think that's, one of the things any actor or aspiring actor wants, you oh, know. Definitely. So, so, so now I have to ask about this. How did you find out about Demon Hunter, and how did you get involved with the series? That's interesting. <laughs> uh, my agent, my agent actually just sent me on the on, on the audition, and the showrunner and uh, creator Tim O'Leary. I guess he liked my breakdown and called me in. Mm -hmm. And I will say Demon Hunter is one of like one of the projects where you get like when they want you to come in for an audition, they give you what's called sides and you read over the sides and then like you prepare your character and all that stuff. Demon Hunter was one of the very few times where I got the sides, I read it. And I just got it. it. Everything was just clear when uh-huh. I read that project. And I was like, it was almost like I was in the director's mind. You know what I mean? Because it has uh, references from Buffy or yeah. like uh, not references, but um, kind of like similarities to Buffy and Supernatural. And those are all my shows. And so oh, like his writing shows. style, right? So his writing style, I completely got from the jump. So I went in there. And I mean, like, you never know as an actor, you never know, like, you could think you nailed something and then it's like, oh, I didn't hear shit or you thought, <laughs> oh, yeah, I was so good. And then you hear, 
oh, I guess I wasn't that good. But that okay. was like one of the projects where I was like, I nailed it. I fucking nailed it. Like I got it. Like it yeah. was in my bones, you know what yeah. I mean? And so working on that project has been so cool. Not only because, like I said, I kind of like had a vibe with the writing. It's like we get to do stunts. Mm -hmm. We get to do flips. We're doing fight choreography. This is all stuff that I love to do. So I got to marry a lot of my personal talents that I grew up doing in this project. So I'm. this is one of those things that I'm very, very proud of. Very proud of. Sweet. And your character on the series, Jeremy, mm-hmm. he's a demon slayer. And that's like exactly. one of the questions I was going to ask you when I heard demon slayer, I automatically thought of Buffy. Exactly. <laughs> and so, yeah, it takes influences from like Buffy. If you're a fan of Buffy, if you're a fan of Supernatural, if you're a fan of like those kind of shows, mm-hmm. there's something in Demon Hunter for you, 100%. And it's about two guys and they basically run a, a, a demon slaying agency and people reach out and it's like oh i have ghosts or i have something going on you know what i mean and we go in and we work our magic and we do our thing and it's 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 super cool it is super cool and i don't know um if you got the memo or whatever but we recently got distribution yeah and we're going to be streaming on mm-hmm. here tv and hopefully on other platforms and so our hard work paid off. <laughs> yes, yes, it did. And here, 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 TV is is really big for 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 L L G B T Q films and TV series. Exactly. And exactly. This is a L G B T Q horror series. It's a, and yes. There's not many of them out there. And um, I was really happy to see something like this getting, getting made. Exactly. And so that's why I was, I was really proud to be a part of it. And it's so funny because we kind of like went back and forth because kind of like we were just talking about like my whole background and like all the characters that I played, like I've played, I've gone all over the spectrum. So me, I'm the kind of actor, I don't like to label anything. And yeah we just had like a discussion and it was like LGBT series. Da, 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 da. And for me, it's like, okay, we love that. That's great. But to me, I'm an actor. I'm a storyteller. Yeah. This is just a series. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. And um, who was I watching? I was watching an interview and this is, it really resonated with me. I was watching an interview with uh, Tyler Perry and he oh, was yeah. on one of he was on one of the morning shows and he was Mm -hmm. promoting one of his movies and talking about his movies. And the interview asked him, well, what is it like making a black film? And he was like, no, 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 no. I'm making a film. I make films. My cast may be black, but I'm making, I made a film. Yeah. Like this is about human beings having human interactions. It's just a film. And so anytime I see something with like a label on it, I'm just like, okay, What's deeper under that? Because I never want to alienate anyone because yeah. someone might see a black film or an Asian yeah. film and it could be a white person think, oh, that's not for me. Yeah, that's exactly. not the case. There's something in there for everyone. So, but with here t- TV extending their olive branch and, and, and giving us distribution and mm-hmm. opening us up to the audience, I'm really excited for that. And then I just hope we can continue going and not and have a broad uh appeal because there may be lgbtq characters and that representation is definitely important but i just want people to know outside of that community too that there's something in there for everybody and there's something in there that you can relate to and don't let don't ever let a title scare you off or alienate you if that makes sense you know what i mean it completely makes sense Mm-hmm. Well, it's a horror series so i'm definitely gonna watch it because i'm a horror fan so i don't care whether it's lgbt asian black whatever it's a horror <laughs> series and i'm watching it <laughs> love it love it i i don't know if you can talk about this yet do you have Uh-oh. a favorite scene from the series i don't know if you're allowed to say anything well, I know a couple of them have been shown, but I mean, I will say honestly, um, 
there are two that stand out that I know that I was a part of. Obviously, okay. my first fight scene that like that was like the first thing that I choreographed and like we shot for the show like that stands out for me. And then there's a few scenes with obviously my co-stars, but then uh, one of the other the female lead, her name is Yaz. And I think we have like a really cool chemistry and we play off of each other. Nice. And so a couple of the scenes that we have together, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like when you're filming, like when you're an actor and you're filming stuff, like when you're in the moment, it's like, oh, that was something. That was something mm-hmm. kind of cool. That was mm-hmm. something kind of cool. And even the director was like, that was, that was really cool. Like, oh, okay. So I can't wait to see that. Cause I know like me personally, I've seen the first two episodes okay uh i haven't seen i have i haven't even seen the whole series yet so oh, wow. um yeah so i'm excited to see how it plays out so all right, all right sweet <laughs> and and how's how is working with the cast like for for demon honor well that was it was very interesting because anytime and this is coming from an actor standpoint. So I'm going to be completely honest. Anytime you get like a whole bunch of actors together, it could either be lightning in a bottle or it could be a fucking mess. And I'm not going to lie because you have so many different personalities yeah. and usually actors have strong personalities. Like yeah. it's, you know what I mean? But luckily on this set, we all kind of like melted together and it was like, Oh, this is your strong point. This is your weak point. You know what I mean? So we mm-hmm. actually worked together as a team and banded together as a team. Like we actually still have, I was emailing, we were all emailing each other the other day. Like we have our thread and all that good stuff. Sweet. So I was, nice. yeah, I was very happy that we actually jailed and we liked each other because you hear those stories and it's like, Oh, uh, Oh, uh, Oh, I'm working with you. You know what I mean? Oh God, or they don't like each other. But luckily, we gel. Thank God. Thank God. And I always ask ask the guests this when they're on. Was there Uh-oh. any? Uh oh, <laughs> I'm nervous. Was there, was there any funny or cool or great behind behind the scenes stories that happened while you were on set for? For, um, demon for demon hunter? hunter well besides me like pulling my groin and like Ooh. ripping my pants yeah oh. trying to trying to do too much thinking that i'm still this spring chicken and uh <laughs> 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 thinking i can do everything and not stretch so there was that and then like they kind of making fun of me a little bit because when i'm on set i um i eat okay so there's like this ongoing thing like oh tomorrow's eating he's never not eating and it was just like this ongoing thing like oh what is he eating now he's always eating like if you look at the stories um <laughs> there were a whole bunch that were posted and it's like oh he's eating again what's in tomorrow's mouth today like he's always eating I'm like leave me alone i'm hungry <laughs> oh you can't be eating nothing bad or fatty because you got a uh, good belt so you well know. i try so and that's what i'm saying it's like okay i'm over here doing flips and kicks let <laughs> me eat okay and then before we even got to set i was probably working out so if i want to eat these chips i'm gonna eat these chips right exactly <laughs> <laughs> so horror films what are some horror films that you love watch and i i know earlier you said the scream series and the elm street series elm street series one three four and west craven's new nightmare the other oh, ones can go west the other craven. ones can go okay. yes west craven's new nightmare i love okay. that one too even though it is kind of slow um in the beginning i love that um and I mean, I know what you did last summer, which is like a, a rip of screen, but it still it has that like nostalgic place in my heart because of the time that it came out and all that good stuff. Um, I love and that then, film because Buffy was in it. <laughs> say it again. Say it louder. Yes. <laughs> yes. Still, still, she still holds a dear place in my heart. But They kill her in that. But they kill her in that. Doesn't doesn't that make you mad yes. every time you watch that movie? I was it's so like, pissed off. I was like, "Don't stop, Helen! 
keep running, Helen. What are you doing? Oh. What? No, you made it. Why do you have to look? I know. Back? I know. I was like, come on, just just. I said, kill Jennifer Love Hewitt instead. <laughs> oh, but I love her too. But I yeah, I, th- I think honestly, I think Sarah Michelle Gellar would have been a, a better a better final girl yeah. than Jennifer Love Hewitt. No offense to Jennifer Love Hewitt. I know. <laughs> She's my girl. I love her. I've actually met her. She's a sweetheart. Oh, like, okay. but yeah, we what we want. Yeah, I'm like, why does. <laughs> Buffy, why do you always got to die? I know. You always got to die. I know. But yeah, so. I know. Like, so that, I'm trying to think what other like horror movie, because I'm a big, there, you know, horror has like sub genres, you know what I mean? But like for me, I'm a slasher guy. Yes. I love a slasher guy. Yes. So yes. my my big three, Freddy, Ghostface, and then Michael Myers because okay. of H2O. That's when I was introduced to Michael Myers around that oh, time. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So those are my big three. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not a Friday the 13th fan at okay. all. I've tried okay. to watch those movies. I can't. The only all one right. that I watch and I do like was actually the remake. The oh, one that okay, a lot yeah. of people didn't like. I think they did a fantastic job on that movie. So... Right. that's one of my yeah. yeah that one and then i mean and then uh i also like the remake of the texas chainsaw massacre that was the amazing. one with the one with jessica yes Bill. yes that was amazing yes. i, I love going that to one. the theaters to see mm-hmm. that one yeah mm-hmm. i love that one yeah i i really like like that one a lot that's 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 a that's a good one that's a good one that's a good one right there that's a good one what about you what 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 are your go-tos i mean i see you're wearing a a nightmare on elm street shirt of course yeah like love it yes elm Elm street um scream i you know with scream my 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 favorites are scream one scream four scream two wow i love scream four i love that movie Wow. Okay. Like I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I'm I'm a fan of Scream Four. I'm not a fan. Oh God. I don't even know if I should say this because yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan of Emma Roberts. That whole reveal with her being those face. I was like, I don't. I don't like it at all. I'm not a fan. I I didn't like that. But I thought the movie and the message they were trying to get across was like, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, okay. yeah. Well, but I didn't hear you say anything about three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's see if we're really vibing. If you had to say <laughs> anything good about three or any standout thing about three, what would be the standout in part three? Oh my God. <sighs> Any performance, anything that stands out in part three well, that you're like, Nev, okay. Nev the Campbell, of course, like she was the only thing good about well, the movie. I think. Really? Because <laughs> I would say when it comes to part three, I would say my standout, uh-huh. Parker Posey. I was like, okay, yeah, she, okay. she, 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 okay. she's the best part. She's the best part of that movie. She's okay. the best part. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That is so funny. You just, you were like three. No, never. No, no, absolutely not. Just, yeah, that's, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, you watch it and you see mm-hmm. the writing and you see everything mm-hmm. that's done and you could just look at three and tell like, yeah, something exactly. here is not like the others. And then exactly. like, if you're a fan like we are, then you yeah. know what was going on behind the scenes with the yeah. writing and all that stuff. And it totally stands out. Mm-hmm. Totally. And, and you say you like slasher films. Did you ever see yes. Prom Night 2? Prom Night 2? No. It's so that, a so really good female horror slasher. Okay. And, and it, who... Who's the lead in that? Uh, well, Mary Lou's played by Lisa Strange. Her her name is like she only made okay. like, that movie and she okay. got out of Hollywood. <laughs> She's like, I'm done. Yeah, I'm yeah. Done. that's it. No, did I and, even know that there was a sequel to that? Yeah. I don't know if I even knew that there was a sequel to that because this is a sequel to the Jamie Lee Curtis prom mm-hmm. night, correct? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I was not aware that there was a sequel to that. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Take away my horror cred. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The lead, the lead character is Mary. It's Mary Lou. She, she's she goes to the prom and she wants her 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 crown because they name her the prom queen. And okay, she, she wants her crown, and they pe- play a prank on her and kill her, and then she comes back from the dead and goes into a woman's body and p- possesses her and all shit breaks breaks loose <laughs> interesting okay well i might have to check that out I, have, I may have to put that on my queue okay. yeah because i was not i wasn't aware of that one so <laughs> it, yeah it's funny too like the lead act, actress for the film lisa um Right now, when you go to horror conventions and stuff, like the horror fans love that movie. Like it's love it. It's like it has a big cult cult following now, and it was so hard to find her. Lisa Strange. I I searched everywhere. I couldn't find Interesting. her. Interesting. No, no 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 contact. And I I finally found her. I'm not going to say how I found her, but. <laughs> uh, do we even want to know? That's interesting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I found her, I contacted her, and her first question is, how did you find me? How in the hell did you find me? Like, what is going on here, sir? But, but then she agreed to do the interview. Sir? And she had fun with the interview. And yeah. me and her are, like, really cool now. And I got her to go to her first horror convention. I love that. And that is something <laughs> else that I uh, I want to I want to go to never been to a horror convention so okay. i definitely want to go check one of those out because i've heard good things about them okay yeah it's so much fun it is it's a lot of fun what was and, the last one that you went to um it was about three months ago because i i live oh, wow. in uh, philadelphia so philly okay. and jersey and new york have tons of conventions whether it's comic-con or horror conventions okay. and this one was in um, jersey and who uh who was there like give me an idea of like who were some of the people that you Jason, saw one of the jasons was there kane hotter kane hotter okay and um uh one of the mike the michael the michael myers from halloween and halloween kills james jude court okay yeah okay he was there dan Danielle Harris from Halloween. Oh, so we had some heavy hitters there yeah. then. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. All right. They yeah. See, had, those are all names that I know. So it's a good they, thing. They actually even had <laughs> Kane. Kane was actually there, the WWE wrestler. I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> see, and you lost me. You were doing so well. You, you were on and then you lost me but everyone else sounds good yeah (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, horror conventions are really fun like you would you would love especially when the show comes out like yes you'll you know you might actually get asked to come do signings and pictures and i will be ready i will be ready and willing and ready to go like Demon Hunter all day long. Right. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and like, what about songs and stuff? Like, what's on? What kind of music do you like? What's on your play? Your playlist? Honestly, when it comes to music, I'm such a, a freaking weirdo. It all depends on my mood. I know. I kid you not. Because like today was on my like on my workout playlist. Mm-hmm. Like today was my R and B funk jams from like the 70s and 80s so nice. old school and nice. then the other day i don't know why i was in like my offspring phase so i was listening to like all of their stuff so my musical taste is all over it it really depends on my mood but if oh. you look at if you look at uh my playlist it's like is he okay what's going on why is he what's what's happening here so yeah Sweet, there you go. <laughs> and what about shows you you binge watch? What are some shows you you like to binge watch? I mean, 
there's there's so much tv now like honestly there's so much tv there's so much stuff out there and like that's how i like to watch shows so mm-hmm. let's say like if there's like a series or something that's out like the last thing that i binged watched was that show nine perfect strangers on hulu and i it's with nicole kidman it's about um the the it's a wellness retreat but then things aren't as what they seem. And so I heard good things about it. So I waited till it was all finished and then I just binged it. But then other than that, what I find myself doing a lot of the times is I'll go back and I will rewatch a lot of the stuff that I love from before. Like I just got finished watching Buffy again. Nice. I watched Entourage again. Nice. Um, but if we're talking recent stuff, like Nine Perfect Strangers was really good. Stranger Things, yes. of course. Yes. Um, don't judge me, but I'm one of those people who still watches Grey's Anatomy okay. to this day. Okay. Every episode. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. I just got done binge watching Chucky. My cousin loves that show. And she speaks very highly of it. So it was I think, a very good series. And that's what I've been hearing. Mm-hmm. And that's been the consensus. So mm-hmm. now that it's done and I can binge watch it, I'm going to do that. I'm Sweet. going to take it like a weekend and just like watch it because I, I heard it. They did a really good job. Oh, it's, because, it was very good. Because I'm not going to lie. Chucky and Child's Play, that was never really my that I was I was never really into it you know okay. what I mean so okay. but she loves it and she spoke highly of it and then from what I've read and from what I've seen I'm like mm-hmm. oh. and they got Devin Sawa and Jennifer Tilly yeah All Devin right. Sawa's in it yeah I might have to check it out I <laughs> might have to check it out and see so come on Final Destination let's go <laughs> and Devin Sawa plays twins like he he's him and his brother are twins and he plays the both in them. It's crazy. Interesting. Okay. Back with the bang, Devin Sawa. Back right? with the bang. Don't and hate it. Jennifer Tilly was absolutely amazing, like always. I love Jennifer Tilly. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and the thing that kind of blew my mind, too, I was watching her on, I think it was like a Kelly Clarkson show or something yeah. like that. I didn't know that she was 65 years old. Wait, why? She's like 64 or 65 years old. I was like, wait a minute. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. I'm like, okay. Go, go. You, you go, girl. I would have never thought that the way she looks. Like, I would have exactly. never thought, thought that. No. Exactly. When you have some time, look her up and like look up that backstory. I was like, wow. whoa. That, that blew my mind. That really did. Damn. Okay. Yeah. I never knew that. I I mean, it makes sense. Like she's been in the series for a long time doing the job. Yeah. 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 She's yeah. been in the industry yeah, for a while. Sense. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, my, my mind's blown with that. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, do you have anything coming up next that you're allowed to talk about or anything well, you want to only, push your plug? Yeah, the only other thing that I have coming out, and I we actually just got a uh, notice of the release date, and it's coming out January 1st, New Year's. It's a movie that I did called Blunt News. And the only way, it's a comedy, and the only way that I can describe it, it is the movie Anchorman. Yeah. You're familiar with Anchorman. Yeah, it's Anchorman meets Friday. Have you ever okay, seen Friday yeah, with Ice yeah. Cube? So yeah, yeah. It, that's that's how I would describe that project. And I play this <laughs> this rapper named Ye Digga, who's basically a ripoff of Kanye. <laughs> He's basically a ripoff of Kanye West. But uh, they told me <laughs> when I started the project, yeah, just. It's it's Ye Digga. He's 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 a fake Kanye. Go in there and work your magic. So oh I, my I, God. I did my best and I did oh like this over exaggerated uh version of Kanye West. So that comes out on January 1st. It's called Blunt News. So you guys check it out. It should be awesome. Um Omar Gooding's in it. Nice. Um yeah, a, a couple of other people, but yeah, just think Anchorman meets Friday. It's about this news 
crew. It's the Urban News crew. Okay. And there's a lot of marijuana involved. Hence, blunt news. I see. I see. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, it's interesting. So, yeah. So, that Demon Hunter starts streaming on the 14th. I'm trying to think what else do I have in the pipeline? And see when we in this interview, then something else will pop into my head. But those are the two main projects <laughs> that I know that are coming out that people will be able to see. And hopefully we get good feedback. I know we're going to get uh, great feedback from Demon Hunter, because like I said, there's going to be something in there for everybody. Oh, definitely. If you like the stunts, if you like the campy horror, if you like the, the quippy jokes, like yeah. there's something in there for everybody. So, yeah, i I can't wait for that to come out. I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be awesome. Of course. You're, you're in it. Hey, <laughs> you hear that, guys? I'm in it. Tamario <laughs> Fletcher. That's right. Don't forget it. <laughs> and, uh, and where can fans find you at? Like, what's your, your pages? The, the, everything is Tamario Fletcher. And I made sure my handle is my name, Tamario Fletcher. My Facebook is Tamario Fletcher. Everything is Tamario Fletcher because I'm the only fucking Tamario Fletcher. <laughs> there are, there's no other Tamario Fletcher in the world. So I'm literally the only one. So I'm not that hard to find, guys. At Tamario Fletcher, at me. I respond. <laughs> okay. And he really does because I messaged him and... <laughs> <laughs> and he answered me fast, so you, hey. you, you do respond. Well, don't say fast, okay? Don't make it sound like I don't have a life, sir. All right, sir, okay. please. No, it took him so long to respond. answer me back. I had to message him two or three times. Exactly. I had to go through so many. Oh, yeah. Answered you right back. <laughs> <laughs> well... I want to thank you again for coming on. I know you're you're on your little break over there. You're on vacation and Woo! Miami, fun. Miami, thank you. Miami Beach, wherever. Have exactly, fun. exactly. Have fun on the see. beach in the sand and wherever you thank go. You. What happens in Miami stays in Miami, right? <laughs> uh, and I just want to thank you once again for extending the offer and having me on your platform i really do appreciate it and to thank all you. you guys watching uh thank you guys so much for tuning in checking me out and remember at tamario fletcher i respond not super fast not not but super fast but he okay because i mean i i still do stuff i have a life but yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right buddy thank you Thank you again for this. This, is, this has been really awesome. Thank you. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. And then I look forward to hearing from you. And you guys, don't forget, check out Demon Hunter. It starts streaming on the Hear TV app and video on demand on January 14th. And then uh, be on the lookout for Blunt News. I know it's going to be released on January 1st. As far as the exact uh streaming platform i'm not too sure yet okay. but um at me let me know and then i'll respond because remember i respond <laughs> and and you know may, maybe you could smoke a little while you're watching it but not exactly not for anyone under the age of 18 of course <laughs> exactly exactly you do it responsibly of course yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> great man have a good night <laughs> you too thank you for having me have a good night and that's it all right <laughs> bye guys bye. <laughs>